Welcome to IAE 2951 Alien Day. Four different manufacturers on the same day. Very exciting wares. Not a huge selection, but a very variety selection and very cool alien technologies to talk about. First up is the Sheehan company, AOPOA. And now the company has some very difficult to pronounce light fighters. However, they are the premier light fighter manufacturer for the Xi'an technology. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about this. We saw uh, the, uh, this is like the transformer. Now, when you're talking about the Kao Tula, this is the name of the ship. This right here, the owl at the end, the owl, is uh, designates that it's made for humans. So this is the actual ship. This is the this is the little add-on to the end that signifies it's for humans. Now I am no lore expert, but I just wanted to mention some small little things like that that are on the base level, uh, so you know what you're getting into. The ship is made for humans. The ship is designed. Uh, for humans comfort it has full life support for a human it's only a single seat light fighter uh, the entire ship actually transforms these wings kind of move around and it is a pretty interesting vessel um, I think the biggest claim to fame for this ship is the very interesting thruster layout and in theory I mean it has four main thrusters each one of those wings has an engine which you can clearly see here however when it reconfigures it changes the entire dynamics of how those thrusters behave so this is a pretty cool ship for that for that reason to me as it moves around these reconfigure uh, so pretty dang cool ship a highly maneuverable maybe not the fastest ship in the game in a straight line but extraordinarily maneuverable and very interesting if you find yourself in light fighters constantly this is a ship that'll make it more the game interesting again to you and this is a very rare ship they are not sold except for now and alien week for the most part i've very rarely ever seen them before outside of those time periods now as far as i can tell it's got two size threes i don't actually own this thing however i've seen them in action they're pretty nasty uh, and due to the maneuverability that the ship has, it can get those size threes on target. Uh, basically, they're what I, from what I understand, they're right here. These these are like gimbaled size threes, and that's all it has. But that's still that's a pair of size threes on a super maneuverable light fighter. That is pretty dang cool. No cargo, no box running on this thing. Uh, it is not meant for that. <laughs> so interestingly. The special upgrade for today is one of the only ones, if not the only one. It's only $10 USD lower, but it's better than nothing. So it's clear that they're trying to push these today, and it is flyable. On to the Knox. The Knox is a flyable motorcycle. I think it's overpriced. I think it is very cool. One of the neat things about the Knox is that your character tucks up inside of this area here. Like their feet would be here. And just like on a motorcycle with full fa full fairings, um, this protects you a decent bit from the elements on the front. See that windshield right here is that triangle. And all this nice metal on both ends and on the sides a little bit too um, due to the fairings. So from the front and the back, you would be less susceptible to small arms fire, the weather, the elements. And the entire vehicle collapses up, unlike the Dragonfly. This is a much more practical vehicle to have on a, on a vessel. Now, it is only a single seat. The Dragonfly has a jump seat on the back with somebody pointed backwards. This does not. The Knox is a single seat vessel, and you need to keep that in mind. But it is very cool. It's a unique, it's a unique flyable motorcycle. It is usable now. Uh, very neat. Very neat ship. Uh, vehicle, really. I wish they'd do a giveaway referral with these so I get my hands on one because <laughs> I just don't see the price value. I think this is a buy-in game, but it is a very cool buy-in game. Or, I mean, if you just really have your heart set on these, it's not a terrible option. And uh, finally, for Apoa, you have Santuk Yai. 
So the Santuk Yai is a medium class combat vessel. It is uh, a, basically a different breed of, of, of ship. And it was used by the Xi'an military. Uh, this is like an older vessel. And it has a single medium shield. Now, I'm looking at a, a spec sheet that might be a little out of date. Because there was that rework of combat vessels just recently. But with a single medium shield, I can definitely see this ship. A single size 2 shield. I could see this ship still being very practical and usable. I can see it has some nice chunky armor on it. In general, this design language usually translates into armored at those positions. I do see some joints that would be a problem in possible combat. Uh, but this thing has over double the combat capacity, the double the weaponry of the light fighter we just referenced. It has four size three missile racks, so that means it has eight size two missiles. And it has four size three lasers on board. Now, I'd be curious if you could switch. I, I would honestly feel like I'd like half of these to be ballistic. If I could refit this to have half ballistic, half laser. So you keep the sustainment, but you also have that nice little sucker punch to this thing. But it's still, I, I think it's a pretty cool ship. It is a single seat fighter and it is a unique ship. This falls into the category of if you like the Hornet, if you dig the Super Hornet, the Hornet series, and you really say, you know what, I really like these ships, but I like something a little more maneuverable, a little lighter and have fun with, this is your ship. Uh, another example I can think of is the Sabre. If you like the Sabre, I could definitely see you flying this ship. This is another Transformer. Uh, when it's flying straight out, it yet again has that unique propulsion system where you have four main thrusters. Um, it is a transformer. The engines can point down or up. This is very deceptive. It does not look like this when it's in flight. It is uh, basically a straight up and down vertical ship. So the uh, this one, because it's not showing it in flight, I think warrants a... Uh, I think warrants a... Um, a full picture here so let's take a look that's the full picture of it and it's concept art uh, I would not recommend doing skimming like that but it, it is uh, you can see how it has those folding out transformer style wings and I want to thank Star Citizen Tools for providing some of the information I'm using today um, <laughs> it is not um, it is not something, it is an official picture, but it is something that is a great asset I use. I use all the different uh, websites and wikis and such uh, to do my videos. Okay, so we're on to Gatak, which is another Xi'an company that is not, not offering more than one ship, and the ship is not flyable. Uh, some of us, including myself, were speculating that the Raelin would be uh, a flight-ready ship, ideally by 3.15.1 or 3.16. Uh, we're, we're on a wait-and-see approach to this ship. It is deep in the pipeline, last we heard, but it is still in concept, as you can see. It is not a flyable vessel. Just like the other ships, it shares that four-thruster technology. It is not a ship that is... Uh, is not a ship tethered to the idea of, of having to be a cargo weak, uh, very unmaneuverable cargo vessel. It is a, uh, the Raylan is a ship that has externalized cargo and it has incredible maneuverability. Those thrusters can be pointed downwards at the ground. Those wings fold in and it has excellent maneuverability, which just like the light and medium fighters we just talked about, it can uh, share that capability. We're talking about a ship with medium class uh, computers, radar, etc. We're talking about a ship with the fourth main thrusters, like we talked about earlier. And we're talking about a ship that actually has some pretty serious turrets, one on each side. So when we're talking about the manned turrets, you're talking about two size fours on each side. 
and they have pretty good coverage when just at most turrets when they when they come out they come out slightly and then there you go you've got great firing arcs on both sides defending these little wings one of the downsides to the uh, Shein technology is that I don't like the uh, the uh, a bit the, how how the right behind these wings that are obviously protecting it from the front but not the back. I don't like these little brackets and such that are holding on the engines. I hope we don't have a Connie effect on a larger ship like this. It will be common for people to attack these uh, things and start disabling these thrusters if they manage to get a hold of the ship. It is not the fastest ship in the world. It's not slow in any way, but it is uh, something to keep in mind. Uh, so the Raylan has that unique cargo pod system. Inside these triangles is standardized cargo. Do not be dissuaded by the triangles. Uh, each one of these is your cargo. And there is tractor beams that are designed to go around, tractor beam or tractor beams, that are designed to go around to each and every one of these triangles and pull the stuff out and deliver it. Uh, I would say that because of its excellent VTOL capabilities, its externalized cargo grid, its good tractor beam coverage, and it's uh, good turrets. I would say that this ship is a great all-arounder to deliver goods to localized outposts in the future. Now, we don't know everything about outposts, but we do know that you will need to resupply them. You, you, do, you will need to pick up things from them. And this ship is great as well for if you don't tr exactly trust the people at that, at that outpost. I made the same argument for the Taurus, by the way, that you can use that um, tractor beam turret on the bottom of the Taurus to pick goods up without having to land and throw them into your cargo, which is right there, and then bring up the cargo bay and fly away without ever having to directly interact with the people on the ground. You could comms them, engage the deal, make the contract, they bring out the stuff, you transfer money or vice versa, and there you go. Um, <laughs> this is the same deal. This is a very exotic, unique way to do it. And at that price point is fine. 225 USD is fine. I think this will go up a little bit when it's flyable. I think 250, 275 would not be un unheard of. And to get the 10 year insurance on a vessel that will likely get shot at once in a while is a good idea, especially on a ship that's getting a little bigger. This ship is is pretty dang big for its for what it can do. And we're talking about 320 SCU. We're talking about a crew of basically two, maybe three. Remember, these turrets are a good idea to have covered. Um, and then obviously one of the turret people can then be the tractor beam user while, while the pilot is keeping the ship from crashing and keep an eye on things to fly away if things get out of control. Um, so in a complete environment, I could definitely see this thing being that way. Uh, each crew member has its own little nook in this ship. Um, there are some really unique things that are truly uh, weird. Uh, <laughs> uh, for example, a scratching wall is added for Sheehan. And it, but it is designed for humans. It is able to support humans' life support and everything else like that. Uh, there is a uh, food uh, me mechanism, mess hall, etc. on this ship. It is like three stories tall interior. It also has an interesting hover system in it. You may not appreciate that, or you may. Uh, basically, the elevator system is a like grav lev. So it's very high tech looking. You like float down in the center of this ship on, a, on, a, on, a, on an angle. And if you keep going, you end up outside the ship. So do bear that in mind that it has this really weird alien technology. If you're looking to experience an alien culture fully, this is the kind of ship that you can really appreciate. And because it's coming into the game soon, but not this minute, you should have a very, very good picture of alien tech and uh, be one of the coolest uh, ships on the block when it comes to uh, hauling. Uh, and that's basically what this is. You will not want to take this into a combat mission, but it, it, it is something that can defend itself a decent chunk of time. And I, I think it's a beautiful ship. I look at these Damascus steel looking uh, engine cowlings and stuff, and uh, I'm a sucker for that kind of thing. There was some unique paints for this. Keep an eye out for when it finally goes flyable for more paints. I think there will be plenty of paints for this unique ship that really make it stand out, that really make it beautiful. So that is Katak. On to Asperia. This is a standby company that builds replicas. Replicas. So when I say Asperia, think replicas uh, the, uh, of, of ancient alien tech and uh, things like that. 
Now, <clears throat> they are human, so they certainly think from the ground up of how to make sure a human doesn't suffocate in these machines. And I keep going back to that because don't assume in the future that all alien ships can be captured and taken on by a human without conversion. So when I talk about these companies, they're giving you an opportunity you may not have access to constantly. There may be a one bespoke Cousin Crow style shop on one planet in some solar system that they sell from. And that's one of the things about these ships. The price goes up because I believe that there's some access issues with these ships. They're only made a few of them. Also, on the flip side of that, no matter if you bought them here or you bought them in game, bear in mind that insurance is going to be a gut buster on these things. If everybody's losing them and they need to be replaced, if it's some bespoke manufacturer that only has a few assembly lines, just something to keep in mind. But anyway, the uh, Blade is a flight ready light fighter. I own the ship, got it through the referral program, and I can say that I really appreciate it. It is quite a fearsome design. Uh, one thing to bear in mind about the Vanduul, yes, I said Vanduul. That's what this. That's who the com That's who actually the company. That's the organization that makes these and utilizes them against the humans. Uh, the scary Vanduul like to ram, and one of the surprises I found about this ship is that these things right here are functioning blades. They are designed to ram. Now, what do they ram? Other light fighters. Do they survive the process? Probably not. I've tested it a couple times and I have not. <laughs> but in the future, this will likely be part of your weapon platform is literally the, the, the wings themselves are ramming technology. Now, the ship itself is sitting on a really nice uh, combination of speed, maneuverability. They don't have big squishy thrusters that are off to the side on these rotational things that are that are that are prime targets um and this ship is a one-trick pony you come up to the back here it, you climb into this seat it kind of sits really weird the hud is bright red uh blood red and uh yeah it's not the fastest ship but it's very maneuverable for its size of a small sh of a small fighter and we're talking about a ship that is uh very historied you know it has something that that a lot of ships don't have where the, the the humans have feared this thing for long long time um the first accounts of this thing were in 2681 was the first time we ran into a van to a van dual blade uh so this is something that is certainly um used for those things this this ship does not have long legs it runs out of fuel very quickly uh, and I would say that in your org, if you have that person who's a collector who doesn't like caps, doesn't like logistics vessels, doesn't like mining, doesn't like hauling, doesn't like anything at all, if they're looking for something unique, try to point them towards this or maybe get referrals into one person's, pro, uh, one person's account so you can get one of these for free because the blade has a truly unique circumstance to it that you can train on it if you have a friendly one. So you can fly this against your friends, against your org mates, and train and practice and know how to fight the Vanduul. Know all the weaknesses and strengths of this ship. If you can defeat a blade, you can defeat the Vanduul. Uh, until this shows up. The Glaive. The Glaive is a medium-class fighter. However, I would argue, honestly, that it is well beyond a medium-class fighter in its capabilities. Uh, it, it has that crazy blade style stabby stabby thing going on, uh, just like the, just like the, uh, the blade, um, I was going to say about the name, come to think of it, <laughs> but the other side of, of the, um, of the coin with the glaive is that its weapon systems are much bigger. It has, it has, um, it has a uh, larger platform. It is not as fast. I've flown them a few times in the PTU, and I'm not quite sold on what they can and cannot do. Um, I actually prefer the blade, believe it or not, but maybe that's just a, maybe that's just bias. I see them more as a heavy fighter, not a medium. But uh, yeah, the maneuverability is kind of lost a little bit, and um, those cannons are very scary if you're in front of them. But I, I just don't see those weapons as being able to be put on everything. You've got those size five sitting on there and 
You've, you've got to get the target in front of you to utilize them. But it is a very cool ship. It is flight ready. It is available at the at the show. I think it's pretty telling that they're just letting these be sold. I think there's been times where they didn't let these be sold. Um, especially with 10-year insurance. That's pretty dang cool. They're very rare ship. It used to be anyway. On to the Prowler. Please don't buy this ship. Uh, yes, I went there. The Prowler is one of those ships that is... Uh, so, my problem with the Prowler is, in-game, it's 4.2 million UEC. A UEC. And you can rent it as well. You can rent it. It's over 84k a day. So if you want to practice with your team and really go in depth and and learn run a few missions or just you know run i don't know blitz a couple box missions and some combat missions and there you go you can rent the thing for the day with your crew and you can practice with it i will give you a hint this thing isn't that good for purchasing in game cat in real rl cash 425 usd for something that's only worth 4.2 mil is not acceptable it's just very expensive they're trying to give you the alien tax. Uh, it's already viable in game. Now, granted, that may change over time, but apparently this Prowler is pretty, is, I'm not saying common, but it's not one of, let's put it this way. It is not this. It is not this. These ships that are very, very rare that are, um, that are hard to come by. The Prowler was mass produced, or at least much more commonly produced, and it's expected to be a common sight. Um, now it's based on a Tavaran design. Uh, it's pretty cool that it made, they made it humanized. It does actually have pretty good weaponry for its size. You have two size four cannons and you've also got a nice little two, uh, two size threes on a can on, on a, on a turret. Now I, I do actually like that you can kind of soften up a target so you get in stealthily, maybe you need to pop a couple things that you didn't realize were there, like an AA turret or something, and then land, um, deliver your guys and get out. I do like the fact that it has air dams all along the side when you open these doors. And I also do like when you land, these, these, these metal bars come down to kind of give your guys cover. So if the ship stays on the ground, you, you're, you have these shielded coverage uh, metal things that protect them. So it gives the guys time to react, ability to arm up and run out and um, have a defensive position to fight from. I I also like that these right here, these lit up things, they're actually, at least last I heard, are designed to skid across the surface of an, of an enemy ship. Um, so it has like this anti-gravity, like vaguely anti-gravity style thruster system on the bottom of it, where it's designed to like low profile move along the surface of things with those uh, with those turned on so its main thrusters don't function and then those those are running around as well uh so it's supposed to be like some type of way to move low profile in the future that may be very very attractive for uh for merc mercenary guilds and stuff like that to be able to sneak into an area maybe even skid along the surface of the earth uh or, or sorry the, the the planet or the moon and be able to get in and out. This is a specialized item that is very cool. Uh, it has no services inside of it. It's literally like a bunch of jump seats in the back, up where up here is where the pilot sits, and that's it. It's very cool, very unique, not worth the price. I think this has a huge alien tax attached, and it's a real shame there isn't like a view buying option, because maybe like three seventy five, three uh, three three ninety, you know, something like that. I could I could point you. I could. I could start looking at it and go, eh, you know, uh, yeah, but <laughs> um, make it a toss up. But because of this price point, I just can't justify it, no matter how expensive the air dams are or whatever it is that's up in its price. Okay, the Talon and the Talon Shrike. The Talon and the Talon Shrike are a tale of vehicles that are, I would say, people were very upset and scared of these things. And then they actually kind of like rolled out quietly and nobody kind of noticed uh, <laughs> um the, the the talon is the gunboat version and the shrike is the is the missile boat version so that's the uh that's basically the gist of them uh you have the size four guns on the talon 
and you have the Shrike that loses the uh, the size three weapons for size one guns, and then an internal missile bay of 24 size three missiles. And that sounds like a lot, but then when you take a look at like something like the Freelancer MIS, which is not a very big ship and is almost comparable in size, um, and you start looking at like what it can field, and it's like not even not even talking about its turrets. I mean, you're talking about 20 size threes on a system that delivers more missiles, and then even more, uh, four more size threes and four more size threes. You have eight. You have basically 28 size three missiles on that freelancer MIS and <laughs> you can do like four missile volleys just as well as the free as the shrike can so bear that in mind so and and you can actually have sleeping with beds on the <laughs> with on the freelancer MIS it, it is a bulkier ship with nowhere near the maneuverability and it doesn't look as cool but it is an interesting side note so what the tail on and the tail on strike offer is very overkill weaponry on a smaller platform, the light fighter concept. I think these are very cool ships. I think that the Tavaran have a very cool design. And this was like one of the first, you know, truly bird like ships that they built. The Tavaran are very proud of their, of, of their, of their lineage of being from like a, like a, you know, aviary based society and, and, and sorry, uh, alien aliens that are basically literally uh, from what we would call aviary uh, background um so very cool tech very neat um i have no real opinion on these if you like light fighters these are yet another option for you um 115 usd is not bad at all especially as a ccu from another ship if you if you if you see a cannibal or a missile one i i would say this because of a lot of these, and this goes for almost everything today, get to this, get to this, get to the IAE's showroom floor, and rent these, rent these ships, because these are truly unique vessels, and you got forty eight hours to make your decision. Don't feel rushed. Well, by this point, you have like forty hours, and if you're listening to this by tonight, you'll have thirty six hours. But still, <laughs> you still got plenty of time. So my suggestion to you is. Get out, get out and fly these around and uh, really enjoy them and find out if they're for you. Run some missions. Run some real basic missions with these to get a feel of these weapon systems. Try to bring a friend to act as your uh, buddy system as well. As you get used to it, you don't want to have to rely on these things. And if they blow up, you're going to be like, oh, man, I, <laughs> I wish I had another chance with that. Uh, so, I mean, to be fair, you have insurance, but you don't want to be sitting standing there with your hands in your pockets. I'll get to the packs at the end of this discussion. But uh, there is some crazy packs. Okay, the stars of the show, the Banu. So this is one of the ships that's near and dear to my heart, the heavy fighter. Oh, you know, they're calling it a light fighter, but there is not a planet that this light that this would be a light fighter on. There's not a solar system that would they would call this a light fighter. I I would call it a medium at the very least. So I'll just call it a medium fighter because that that's how I that's how I'm doing it. <laughs> uh. The Banu have a unique warping system, and this ship is near and dear to my heart because it's a two-seater uh, that allows you to bring a friend, and they don't just stand on, sit on a chair or something. They actually can help you fight. There's the co-pilot sits over here. The pilot sits on this side. The ship does look just like this in the game. It does, it does not look like, oh, they, they, they sell you one thing and then it's another. Uh, most of the modules on board are small and medium. It has two, uh, uh, the, the size two missiles, and it also has four of the size two cannons. So they're gimbaled. They can move back and forth, and they are staged right here and here. Now, I talked before, I think just yesterday, about the Redeemer, how the weapon systems are dead center, which helps with the uh, weapon guidance. However, like literally you point it at the enemy and it fire and it, it hits. These are gimbaled. So that means that it, because they recognize that they're off on these wings, off to the sides a little bit, uh, you need to have some mechanism to keep you on target. Fortunately, the gimbal system uh, allows the, the entire gun to move like 30 degrees to each side and hit your target. So you don't have to be exactly on them. 
That means that this ship, while it's a little bulkier than some, is very good at keeping its hits on target, and it does hit very hard. It has good shields. It has good weaponry. I am very happy with this ship. Its size 2 shield is pretty good. The Banu Defender is one of those ships that just really, I, I feel like it, it, it can hold its own, and I could gladly jump in this and have to fight a Super Hornet off to defend my BMM. And uh, yeah, I'm going to get to that in a moment, big time. Because the loner and the symbiotic ship to this ship is the Merchantman. Now, the Merchantman, we all thought, we all speculated endlessly. I'm sure you did too about the prices of these. I think everybody did. And it's only going on 50 bucks, shockingly. A lot of people I know, they were, I've actually ran into at least four people that told me <laughs> I, I've i purchased the BMM, not because I even think it will be good. It might be, but I picked it up because of the price hike. And um, maybe CIG saw those stats and said, uh, I don't know. So, this ship is still in concept, unlike its defender that's there. That has, it has a hangar built to just hold this, by the way, or any other ship for that matter in that size bracket, but it's really built for this, it was in this mind, uh, to defend it on top. The hangar's like up there. And this is like an older-ish picture, as far as I remember, because this bottom is kind of bowed now, designed to have like those armored things, and this scoop, it, I believe, is even bigger because it's acting as a stairwell once this thing lands. Um, the size 8 guns come out the front. Yes, I said the word size 8 guns. There's two on the sides. And there is some very compelling evidence from the community that there may even be a mount for another large gun on top of this ship. There's a bracket system for something. They don't know what, but it's something. And... <laughs> It could also be argued that maybe there was a third gun in the concept and they backed reconcepting and they backed off. They said, look, this is too much capability, but topic for another day, big topic for another day. Now, this ship has on the back of it another turret. It's believed to be around size five dual weapon that comes out of the top. And remember, on a turret, that's pretty dang big. And then on the bottom, there's four additional turrets and PDSs and all sorts of wonderful things. So this ship is a monster. It, ha it, 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 it can go to combat. I wouldn't recommend it, but it can. I think this ship in the future, when it is flyable, will be around 750 price point. And I talked with a few folks, I talked endlessly with Mason about this. I, uh, we, we've both speculated that it could even go higher. And it's one of those things where it really depends on where they want it to fold it fall into the categories of where do you really want this ship? Do you want this in players' hands or not? It has eight public stores. There's a you go up the walkway or you land in the hangar, and there is access to eight stores. There is a negotiation hall. There is a <laughs> There's a medical facility hidden away inside the uh, the private facing side. There is crew storage areas, and uh, the idea is that the crew would also act as the merchants. So I will note that, unlike the privateer, there is not a bunch more rooms. However, there are visitor quarters. So it is possible on a BMM to have the visitor quarters be a few NPCs to guard and, and, and sell at the merchant locations inside this ship. But it's supposed to be a more hands-on ship, whereas the privateer has at least a crew quarter for each and every shopkeep of the 10 stores, the eight public and eight and, and two private. This ship would not necessarily have that. This ship, however, does retain a massive, massive, storage area of like 2800 SCU. I cannot stress how much of a value this ship still is even at that price point. And yes, I know if you go on discords or spectrum, etc. And you talk to people, they'll go, Oh, I bought that for 250 USD, 350 USD, 400 USD. There is a joke, literally a meme going around of the BMM coin, it keeps going up and up and up, but it will go up again. So if you're on the fence about this ship, do not hesitate. One of its loners is the Defender, one of the best fighters in the game. So you can have fun now, and when you're ready, this will be ready. And guess what? If you don't like it, you can 
we can CCU it again once it once it price hikes yet again, because I, I truly believe this will end up at seven fifty. It doesn't have the uh, endeavor level of uh, treatment, the endeavor level of capability of going up, but I am very excited about it. So I would say the BMM is probably the uh, the crown jewel of the event today. And uh, let's go over to back on the regular website and let's go to the pledge store. I really wish the carousels were all the same um, carousel today, even though it was four different manufacturers technically. I'm going to make it more smooth for this and also more smooth for players to make the decision. I, 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 I fear if players go to a single manufacturer and don't jump around, you know, it kind of like silos everything for them. Uh, the Orion is still available. I talked about this before. That's a great sale, but who knows, you know, when that's going to be reconcepted by middle next year. Check out my video from yesterday. So it'll be in the cards uh, to find out more information about the RSI Orion and why you should pick one up if you if you really like to be industrial and that's uh, the reclaimer is another example of that but let's see here it is so here's the merchantman the merchantman has a couple options this is a really nice one for example if you have a 600i ex having this for that kind of price point you don't have to even apply the ccu you can enjoy the explorer now one of the best uh, pilot-based gun systems in the game, three size fives plus a whole four racks of, of size two and three missiles, I think it is. Uh, it, it was really nice to have. It's a really powerful ship. And uh, a single turret gunner, and you really made in the shade if you really want to overdo it. And it's going to get its golden pass, and you get the best in show skin. Um, but um, Origin Day is not today. But if you had it, or if you're considering that, you could do it this way and grab this CCU now. Sit on it, and then when you're ready, bam, you've got it. If it doesn't work out, you melt the CCU. Um, that's one option. I could see the C2 Herc. Um, that's a little higher price point. And then if I hit all ships, not just the ships I own, but the all ships, we have uh, some options. I guarantee, I think the M2 would be, yeah. Game read my mind. <laughs> that's a perfect option right there. Thirty dollars. I wish there was a discount on this for War Bond, but this you can at least use credit on this. So, and it is available. Uh, we've had games of them played in the past where they've they've said, "Oh, you can do this, but not that." Um, by the way, six hundred eyes. There's the touring, for example. That's still worth it uh, because you can always just melt the CCU, play that CCU game, and let's say the Prowler. Definitely the Prowler. That's an example of getting yourself out of a bad position. Um, so you can still have fun now and I would do it sooner than later. Just convert that to a merchantman. That price is going to go up. It's a fantastic ship. It gives you a future in this game and this ship will not make you much money. This ship will make you boatloads of money. It's a hauler. It's a seller. It's a retail store space. It hopefully will have services. You have medical on board. You can, you can run a small organization out of this and really start your, yourself on an outpost, uh, without even needing the outpost until until you're ready for it so that's kind of where i'm at with the with the with the upgrade system yes i know i focus just on the merchantmen and it's a little unfair but uh yeah I, I i feel like a lot of things today are um fluid um i talked about before about the talon let me go let me go down this down the track a little bit here um full disclosure I don't have that many alien smaller vessels, so you can see that I'm kind of like gravitating towards the BMM for very good reasons. Uh, but the let's pick the I think the Shrike out of the two is probably the more interesting to me. Uh, the Shrike has that missile that you would not expect out of such a small ship, and it just flings missiles everywhere, which I think is very useful. And if I'm looking. I think of ships that would like surprise me, uh, maybe that I'm not really too excited about. The Herald would be a nice little upgrade for the Herald. I think of ships that are like, look, it, they were good, but I'm not too fond of blank. Um, those type of ships are perfect. The Buccaneer, there's a $5 upgrade to the Talon Shrike. I think that's a nice upgrade. Uh, the M50, if you're not, if you find that racing is not really doing it for you, there's not a lot of content in racing right now, 15 bucks. Uh, so that's not a bad option. I mean, like the Talon Shrike, 
it is something where you can really hang your hat and say this is really fun. This is of course the the uh, the home the home brew the the war bond today, the the, the cartooth. Uh, so aside from having an incredibly difficult to pronounce name, um, I think of the Cuddy Red. This is a ship that just got nerfed where it does not have regen anymore. If you're not quite fond of that and you're looking for a way out, like you're not, like you weren't more into it for the rescue, you were more into it as like an armored APC. This would be a good little ship, a good light fighter to have fun with on a nice war bond. That's not a bad price for war bond. Um, I would not do the free retaliator base. I talked before about this price is going to go up dramatically. Give it enough time. Razor EX for the five people who have one. Here's $5 war bond for it. That's not bad. Uh, sometimes you get that lucky. Uh, <laughs> the prospector. <laughs> I would not do this, but you could do something like this. If you decide mining's not for you, you could do something simple like that. There, there's a few ships like that. Sometimes you get lucky where it just kind of slides in right where you needed it. But that's very rare. Now, on to ships I wouldn't do. So <laughs> the blade is at a price point now where look at the ships you would have to get rid of in order to get the blade at a reasonable price. I wouldn't give up the triage. I wouldn't give up the 400i for a blade. I wouldn't give up a Connie <laughs> or a Vanguard or a Raelin or any of these. Um, honestly, the, the, the Ares, I mean, these are fantastic ships, all for a piece of street cred, basically, because that's what a blade is. A blade is a good practice ship to fight against. It's not meant that it's very good itself. It, don't get me wrong. I'm sure somebody amazing at flying a fighter is, is, is going to correct me, but I just feel it's 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 not the best ship. It's not meta at the moment, and for its price, I don't think it's good. If you took a one, oh, you took it took deducted a one off of this number, then all of a sudden I'd be all over it. I'd be like, oh yeah yeah yeah, a little bit more than Talon. You can go with it, enjoy it, etc. Uh, okay, so paints. Don't forget that paints are available throughout the event. Uh, there's plenty of new paints. Uh, you do not need to run and grab the paints now, uh, but it would be recommended that you grab the paints. And that's how it is. Well, yeah, the paints are there. They're a good idea. They're beautiful. Be sure that you want every one in a pack. That's one thing I am learning to emphasize now. Like, I love that two-tone blue and, blue and black one on the hammerhead. I don't exactly like the multicolored one on the hammerhead. Oh, apologies. I almost skipped the packages. Uh, that's really important. The beauty of sort by all and then sort by price, uh, put it all, value all and sort by price, I can go straight to the package. So, oh, uh, fun fact. Last night, uh, I managed to pick up an Idris P war, uh, uh, credit edition. Um, I have, I actually captured like a minute and a half of video. If you need me to talk you through like how the process is and such, let me know. I debated making it a, a zone little video, like a six minute long video talking about it, the process of prep and everything, but there's really not much to it. Um, I literally had the world clock on um, this website. I can show you that. I'm not trying to hide anything from you. Uh, I had this in the corner of my other screen, and at exactly 3 a.m. Eastern, my time, I uh, had in the cart from the previous, from Wave 2, I had the item. So when you go and you have the item in your cart already set up with your store credit set up, uh, you literally just hit place order. hit it And scroll down and hit accept. So it's like place order. And then the I agree that this is the backer, et cetera, thing, and you hit I accept. So hit the button, scroll down, hit place order. And if it if there is nothing there, it'll it'll look like this, first of all, out here, but you won't even see this anymore. It'll just say, uh, sorry, that item is unavailable. It's out of stock. But you just keep doing it over and over again when it hits 3 a.m. I did it 10 seconds before 3 a.m. I think I hit it around f four seconds before 3 a.m., Two seconds after 3 a.m., my request went through. Uh, it still set out of stock. And then, like, I think 10 seconds or 11 seconds after 3 a.m., it went through. It actually worked. And uh, I got the ship. 
frantically put in the, the information and that was that. Uh, I used store credit to get the Idris P. Um, and interestingly, like I had slightly less than the full uh, amount for the credit. So that was kind of a funny experience. And it occurred to me that um, these bigger packages are uh, kind of money money sinks. They're like for somebody trying to play catch up. They're for somebody with a ton of money or credit to throw at something. And they're truly a diehard of that company. Great. But if you're just getting them for the big ships, you can get the big ships if you're willing to alarm clock it and sit through maybe the second and third waves and do it the way I just described, you will get the ship you're looking for. And I will show you my my hanger right after this to show that I'm not BSing you. Um, so if you ever need advice or if you just need somebody to coach you through it, um, I don't want to see your info on your screen, <laughs> but I'm just saying um, I'm always here to talk. And uh, if things change, uh, you know, I can reassure you at the next big, I uh, think Fleet Week, I can reassure you about that. I'm always available in Discord, Red J, hashtag 0001. Uh, <laughs> uh, but uh, one of the other things I've heard from a couple people is about their limited latency on their, on their, uh, well, their, their high latency on their, on, on their, on their connection. So like they have a small amount of lag and that is one of the frustrations they have. And to those people, I say, Get it in your cart in wave one or wave two. Still swing at the apple. I'm not saying don't. Make it lucky. But that wave three, if you're willing to stay up to that weird time in the night, uh, <laughs> um, you will get it. There's an extremely high chance. And if you don't get it this go around, six months from now when Fleet Week comes around, you will get it. Uh, so Because the odds are in your favor. There's not that many people trying to do what, we're talking, what I'm describing. And this will work for the jab too, just it's way harder. Do not melt everything in your inventory until you really have this planned out and you're dieharding this um, unless you have that level of credit to play with. Um, if you can just melt one or two things to pull this together, great. Remember, do not ever melt CCU'd items. You, you can't get them back. Uh, okay, so the Aegis Complete Pack. We have a couple Avengers in here. If you saw my tour of, uh, of the Aegis of Aegis Day, you remember that had the Warlock and such, um, it has the Javelin, it has, that's why the price is so dang high, it has the Nautilus, it has, uh, let's see, the Idris P, not the Idris M, but the Idris P, very cool, very cool ship, um, very, I think this pack is, is, is just too damn high, but I understand, I, I understand it, I just think the pack's too high. If, if that packs for you, you'll understand. Uh, you'll, you'll just go, oh, well, you don't need to talk about. That's, that's fine. <laughs> uh, that's perfectly fine. I am looking for an Alien Day pack, and I do not see it. <sighs> I, I don't think I covered the Aegis pack yesterday. That's why I kind of just blazed over it really fast. Um, there we go. Now, why was this not visible on the All tab? That's mildly concerning. Or is it that there was so many high-priced ships that I just didn't notice it? <laughs> Which is also a possible. Oh, yes, okay. I was just distracted by the big ships and, and, and the Anvil pack and oh, 50 different pack, pack, packs. Okay. So here's the Warbond variant, and here's the slightly more expensive... Uh, credit variant. I always like to pick the credit variant to talk about price value because I feel like not many people are going to be buying this war bond. Um, so we got the Talon, the Talon Shrike, got the, the very nice Defender, got the Banu Merchantman as your anchor on this, the Van Duel ships you have on here, both the good ones. You have the Railin, the Prowler. I feel like the Prowler is going to boost this price up of uh, probably 100 or 200 more than it really deserves to be. I feel like these smaller ships also have a lot of uh, costs attached to them that really shouldn't have. I think of the Blade and the Glaive. I think of these guys as I need, need really need 100 taken off each. So honestly, I think this pack is worth about 2200-ish. And the beauty, of, the beauty of this pack, though, is that if you truly are an Alien fan and you love LTI, 
this pack will get you everything you wanted with LTI. And the the other thing is the value of some of the ships in here, such as the Merchantmen, will go up. I think these other ships will have a availability bias to go up slightly too, maybe 25 to $50 USD in value or perceived value in game at least. So <laughs> these, these ships are not going to be available at the new deal when you walk in. Maybe the Prowler will be, um, the Talons, but the other ships below that, not so. So no, the Talons, the Prowler, or the Nox, but everything else on this list is like in that availability risk. The Banu Merchantman, for example, is handed down from trader to trader in the Banu families, the great families, and they live on that thing. It is their prized jewel. I don't suspect there's going to be that many made for humans. <laughs> uh, so just to give you some perspective on what you're getting LTI on. Uh, the same thing with the glaives and the blades. I think that the, uh, the UEE Navy will be busy buying a lot of them to train their people. And they're going to have training mishaps, and some of them are going to be broken or blow up or whatever, and parts are going to be hard to come by. Uh, so once again, you have some really unique ships that a lot, a lot of people will have. And this is not the craziest value because I see at this moment it's probably worth around 2200 but then you got to think you'll gain a little bit here, you'll gain a little bit here. Um, so not a terrible pack. Uh, I think it's a little pricey, but that's the way these packs are supposed to be. They're like for somebody who just wants it now, no matter what, doesn't want to collect, just wants to get their collection all in one fell swoop. This is not a terrible option to choose. Okay, let's get into the showroom floor. Very small expo. As a reminder, if you come to the showroom floor, you can get in the elevator and choose either hall. Right in the elevator is the schedule and including the dates in game, which things like that are very welcome to me. I think they greatly improve the experience of the player. Uh, looks like it's warp projection system is activating for some reason. Lights, at least that's where they are. Although I was, when it warps, it has a very beautiful green hue it kicks and it sits like right here. Um, this is the Banu Defender. Let's uh, take a closer look at it above here. So, the Banu Defender is huge, especially when it's in its crab formation, when it's in landed mode. These wings, when it's in takeoff, these fold straight forward, and they kind of they kind of scrunch in a slightly, uh, makes it a little less of a huge ship. But it is a big ship, make no mistake. That's why when I saw the designation light fighter, I kind of cringed a little bit. I, I'm not quite sure what they're how they came to that conclusion. Um, here's one of the beds, and then here's the other bed. This is an alien ship. It does look alien. These are doors, and this is where the pilot would would, would sit. So the pilot sits in this seat, and then the co-pilot is in a separate compartment on the other side of the ship. Now, I don't, I've don't. i never tested it, but I assume that if you're on local VoIP, VoIP you, you will hear each other. But um, still, it's an interesting ship. It is one of those where... Um, it will treat the, the, the Banu mer Merchantman very well, the BMM, very well and protect it. A dual engine fighter like this, that, I, once again, it is not a light fighter. I don't, <laughs> at the very least, it's a medium, a heavy, heavy medium. Um, dual seat ship um, that can do virtually every role or any role of solo. But then you also have that co-pilot seat. So it gives your, uh, if you have somebody in your family or friends that only occasionally plays, uh, it gives them something to do, which is nice. Uh, this ship right here, here's the co-pilot area. And I mean, it's a full-fledged, you know, seat and everything, good visibility. And then you have this joint area here when you open the door. Now, this is a ship you would want to wear your spacesuit on because if you open this door, the crew compartments are... Uh, exposed to space now there may be shutters or something i don't know but anyway uh, remember with two beds you have two log out options so if you have a friend that visits only once in a while and they want to stop flying with you mid 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 warp uh, they can jump in the co-pilot bed and go to sleep and log out now here is the blade so the asperia blade 
is a very unique ship. We talked about this a couple times now. You enter through the back here. No, I don't want to rent it. I own it. <laughs> uh, this may be glitched out. But this opens up. You can see these shutters right here. These open up. And you climb into the cockpit. And boy, do you climb into it. Um, it isn't as aggressive as the glaive, but it's close. It is surprising how, how it operates. Uh, you can see it's a rather large ship for its size, just like the the, uh, the Bondi Defender. And it is truly something to be uh, respectful of and be mindful of what it's capable of doing. So this is the Light Fighter. And... Strangely, the I was expecting to find the glaive nearby. I mean, you have the multi-role, multi-engine light fighter blade. I was expecting to see a glaive on the showroom floor right next to it, but I guess they don't want to do that. I know the they may, I know for a fact that the glaive here it is hidden all the way in the back. When the glaive is sitting on the ground, it's built to be put on a carrier. Well, an alien carrier, but a carrier. So these wings fold up, and then when it is ex when it's ready to fight, you can see those massive guns on it. Those massive, massive fixed guns. Um, when it's ready to fight, you jump in here. And once again, it is a weird alien fighter. You uh, you basically climb into it. And you can feel the aggression of this ship. I'm, I'm not asking for it to uh, show me everything, but I'd like to show you the HUD. You can see how it's like this red color. This may not be for you. Um, on this bright showroom floor, it's hard to even see it. But when you're out in space, it's not that hard to see. It's just very, well, red. Uh, <laughs> and um, you, you can tell it does not like you. It's like you're climbing onto a bull and hoping for the best. <laughs> uh, like a bull rider. Um, very interesting ship. Um, always creeps me out. This fellow is interested in the wave himself. Okay, so on to... Let's see. I'm kind of surprised I only see one person here today. I thought the alien day there'd be a lot of folks. But I guess not. You have your two pa you have your pair of talons here. So that's pretty cool. Oh, there's another guy. Now it looks like he's renting the ship. And you have before I go to the before I go to the to the prowler, I would like to check out this ship here. The, the cartooth. And the owl once again, the, the owl designation just means it's the humanized version. But a uh, very cool ship. Um I talked about this before, how the thrusters change. So this is in its landing configuration. You can see these thrusters are like pointed basically at the ground and they can swivel still. See those nice huge pieces of metal there that it can swivel around almost like, almost like, um, a, like an, like a light, you know, like, 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 like a spotlight that can move around and pivot. It's really cool or a pan tilt zoom camera or something like it's really neat. The design these things have. And then once it takes off, this beast goes vertical. This cockpit is very difficult to come to terms with because you move along with the whole structure and everything, and this thing moves, it fidgets, uh, for lack of a better term. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's not for me. I'm not a fan of this ship, but the, uh, the fans of Apoa uh, really do appreciate it. Also, it's worth noting... And it's landed configuration. Look how the weapon systems are pointed directly up, which are basically not not usable uh, in that current condition. So just something to bear in mind. Uh, truly unique ship. Okay, on to the Prowler. Now the Prowler is a cool ship. I said this was a buy-in game. I'm sticking to that. You basically stand in these things these pod things and you stare out these doors are closed usually whoever opened them up up there or maybe it's glitched for this for the for the show maybe they're worried people get stuck in them whatever 
and when it's powered up there's air dam systems that are all around the edges so this is breathable in here regardless of the doors are open or not this door here would be closed uh, for obvious reasons uh, if you're going into a combat zone uh, so you would load up in in the back probably on a very large ship you would get into your positions the pilot would close the door do its pre do his pre-flight checks and then he or she would go run up here get in the pilot seat and take off now you can see there's even more pods here see this one here and these three here um i'll be honest with you i do not know what this is i think this is just another door yeah it's another door for the pilot okay but this is the extent of the ship it is cool it is unique it is something that i think is is, is something really special but Pilots. I don't know why I said co-pilot seat. It kind of just threw me into a tailspin a little bit. I apologize for the pause in speaking there. But, uh, yeah. Uh, oh, one other thing. These shielded windows... Uh, psychic lock, hostiles forward. See this viewport off stuff? It's glitched, but you can turn this off and on. So these are screens. These are like a, the, you know, that the, um, let's see if I can close the exteriors. I can hear it clicking. So yeah, these are screens that's supposed to give you more armor. And the ability to see outside without being uh, so uh, at risk. And this is how it looks when all the doors are closed in flight. And uh, whatnot. You can open them. So your guys can open these. So you will need a bit of fleet discipline. Uh, there is air dams, of course. And I would recommend the pilot be wearing a, a suit anyway. At least an undersuit and a helmet. But still, it's worth mentioning. You can open these on their own. You can open this on its own. So, uh, but in general, the idea is that the pilot would land, open all exteriors, and then all the all the folks would come flying out of this thing. These big metal bars are meant to offer you some protection. That was the original concept. They also give it that bird-like mentality, and these are supposed to be like something where you can you can kind of sit behind it, and you can use this as defensive point. As a reminder, SDF shielding means that the shields kind of extend slightly past the edges of something. So it would not be uncommon for this to have some type of shielding that would be protecting you. And, um... Actually, you know what? I have... There we go. Here's a medical gun. Trying to give me an idea of what I'm talking about. You can kind of, like, get behind something and take some shots. Right? Obviously, it's a medical gun, but you get the point. I apologize for the chat, by the way, if there's anything in there. I don't know. I wasn't paying attention to it. But this will give you a position to be able to defend the ship from. So all of this stuff is meant for you to be able to help get a perimeter, a sense of protection around the edges of the ship. So a smart pilot of this vessel... A smart pilot of this vessel would um turn around and they would uh a smart pilot of this vessel would turn around and land you facing sideways to the enemy position so you can come storming out of these shields air air dams and get over to this position and your 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 squad would be over here the others the other half of the squad would be over there and then once you feel comfortable you give the all clear these are those pads we were i was talking about that we really haven't seen come into their own yet that allow it to have like extremely good maneuverability at low speed very tight to the two different items and the thought is they should help with uh boarding enemy ships when this ship came out there was some suggestion and thoughts and theory crafting from the community that it would be the equivalent of the valkyrie dropship for against enemy ships 
The idea was that those pads would allow it to kind of like magnetically stick to the ship, so to speak, and with, with very limited IR and EM uh, re readings, be able to sulk around across the ship to find a good position for its folks. And then they would EVA out the air dams, which were perfectly suited for space. Remember, the Valkyrie has those... The whole thing gets ventilated if anybody opens a single door, um, whereas this does not. Um, so the idea was that this was better suited for space. It has bigger guns built for space, for, for control by the pilot. Like the, the idea was that this was far better suited for space. There's one obvious downside to both of these ships is that they're very big. Uh, a lot of the ships that you know that you would try to put this on, it would be a little too big to fit on. Like, I struggle to even see this ship fitting on a Liberator, for example. So, I mean, how big is big? Um, <laughs> so, I guess we'll see. I could see it sitting on the pads of a Kraken. But, I mean, there's not too many ships that can fit it. So, it's kind of its own creature. And if you noticed, it didn't have food resources. It didn't have a bathroom. It didn't have this. It didn't have that. Um, it, 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 is, it, is a, it is a drop ship. A through and through drop ship. So, without further ado, let's go downstairs and see if there's any hollow viewer surprises for us. Any goodies down here? I'm pretty anxious to see a rail in, I'm guessing. Um, here's some waiting area, so that means that there is nothing on that side. And on this side is the Noxes. Okay. I talked about these before. They're really cool. I think this is a buying game, but they are cool. I do like the defensive characteristics of the Nox. Really? 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 You know, it, you can tell it has the look of like a, a sport bike, a modern motorcycle sport bike. You can see where your feet stand. I wish it just let me hop on it to show you, but this is where you sit. You have some defense from the back. So if you picture some dastardly Duke evil person trying to get at you, um, you have some coverage from the back of the vehicle. And you have a fair amount of coverage from the front of the vehicle. And that's pretty dang cool. You have... Um, some utility in these weapon systems that are forward facing so if somebody was say you were up that you were trying to catch up with you could interdict them in theory another motorcycle or some other type of vehicle and you could also shoot at them and there is very limited ability for them to hit you from here unless that window is not bullet resistant uh, the elements will also be something that you can get through a little better. I used the blizzard analogy I showed you a couple nights ago. Uh, but from the sides, you have basically no coverage at all. Even your legs are exposed because your knee would be the only thing protected here. Um, your legs, your body, your upper chest would be all uncovered. So do bear that in mind. It's basically a forward-backward protection, but it is some protection. And it sacrifices that second seat for a very good reason. I do like when it's packed up. It almost looks like a big, giant briefcase. I think this is so cool that this whole center packs up. Um, but I hope it's the right one. <laughs> well, let's take a look at the uh, display, which I'm guessing, at the very least, there's got to be a rail in here. So let's see. Here's the Gatak rail in. Now, Gatak is a, is a pretty new manufacturer. Um, this is the only ship they have. So they're going to focus hard on it. Um, the design language, obviously, is the Xi'an. But medium cargo hauling, prime example of House Katak, industrial for centuries, etc. Um, you can see the triangles here we talked about. And then inside is a standard cargo box. So do not be dissuaded. Once again, do not be dissuaded by the triangles. They are not going to impact you in any way, any serious way, to cause trouble. Uh, there was a theory that this, that this is where, like, the uh, this band here would be where the, where the tractor beams roll along. We'll have to see. They get to, like, deploy from up here and kind of roll all along both sides. Um, you can see how the turrets are nicely outwards. See how they're nice and exposed out. That's a good thing when it comes to a big old pair of size fours on each side. Um, nice coverage. Look at 
this is what I'm trying to bring up. Look at even from the backside. The turret can still spin around and get and hopefully get to someone here. Only once you hit like here. And that's if the turrets don't expand anymore. Most turrets, when you deploy them, they stick out slightly further. And then um, they roll. This one looks like it's more built for like rolling around in the circle. I'm staying within the circle though. So that's some thoughts I have. The four engines are exposed from the sides and from the back, but not from the front. You have these big old metal bars that are designed to protect it a little bit. Um, and the maneuverability will be second to none on these ships when it comes to this size of ship. These thrusters are truly going to be an amazing sight. I'm not saying it's going to be the most fastest thing in a straight line, but once it gets to its location, that maneuverability is going to be really nice, and you're going to be picking up a lot of time there. I think in v I think in atmosphere it'll be very interesting to see what they do. I think it'll be very good. We'll have to test it though. And um, yeah, there's your triangles, and that's pretty much the design language of this ship. It's like very triangular angles, the quad uh, thrusters. Uh, very exciting ship. I think the, the they they nailed the turrets. I can't wait to see what they do with the tractor beams and with this externalized cargo. One thing to mention is they said that these will offer very little armor protection to the goods. In theory, somebody does not have to take this ship. They could simply shoot a few of these triangles with, say, an Ares Inferno and pop a couple of them and then just let you run away and then try to scoop up whatever's in those containers. What well, they didn't break with their size 7 bullets, though, to be fair. Uh, if they start hitting it with rounds, it'll probably uh, uh, damage the goods that they're trying to steal. So just to bear in mind that it is external cargo. They do not have to defeat the ship to try to take some of it. But I do see it as a great ship to kind of uh, keep, 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 keep people at arm's length that you're trying to do deals with on an outpost. So I would take that thing into more places I don't trust people 100%. Um, so cool, cool idea. Cool idea. Very cool ship. And I think that's going to make a lot of people a lot of money, that ship. On to the Banu Merchantman. Sorry, the, the Banu. The Banu Merchantman. Before uh, the, the comments section comes alive. Uh, we can see the new mount. This opens up to create the dual size 5 turret. Or larger. Yes, I know there was suggestions of larger turrets possible. The theory crafting is, is alive and well. The stairwell is open, which is regularly a fuel scoop. Um, very cool. It has the folded out wings folded out. Um, it is mentioned that this fits in the largest hangers and pads because these will fold. You can see the um, the fixture here. So this will fold up and that will allow you to fit in there. Um, interestingly, you can see the mount points for the turrets, but there is no turrets mounted to the bottom of the ship. Um, there should be four of them at the very least and PDSs and all this other crazy stuff. Um, I really dig the music in here. Okay, so these thrusters here, like this thruster, for example, this is clearly meant to make it better for it to land and safely land onto a gravity-based moon or planet. And then these are retractable um, grates or, or they are panels that come down out of the ground because there is panels inside this ship that are designed, I think it's this one, that is designed to go all the way to the surface literally it like floats in place it uses alien technology to float cargo uh, in place down to the ground including like the size of a cyclone and normal standardized cargo unit containers so these containers can be moved large containers can be moved there is a gantry on the top of this 2800 SCU cargo area it can lift things put them onto this panel and then the panel drops it down uh, it is internalized. There was hot debate in CIG about whether that would be external, internal, some combination thereof. But as long as that is not lowered, it is um, it is internal. Um, still, we haven't heard if there will be like an air dam there. So when it is open, is it going to be ventilated to Atmo or not? Was it is a debatable position. Uh, the ship's um, airlocks are on the sides towards the front so people will enter uh, via the sides and then they'll have this long walkway above the cargo area i'm guessing we'll have windows towards the cargo area to really let them have something to see while they walk along this huge ship and then the public facing like mall two-story mall will be at the end of that walkway so they'll be on the second floor of that walkway 
or they can enter via the staircase if it's on the ground. So this ship is built to be on the ground or it's built to dock. I think that's a very smart move. It has, sorry, it has at least one dock. I don't know if it has two. Sorry, I should take that back. Um, but the docking was a smart move. Having a capital class docking collar uh, ability is really smart. You can land at a station. You can make your sales. You are not bound to just sitting on the surface to make your money. And that is actually an interesting perspective, especially for people considering this or the privateer. I'm sure that's a topic. I mean, it's one fourth, just over one fourth of the price of a privateer. So it, it really makes a lot of people head scratch going, what is the privateer's base? If I'll leave in the cards a description of the differences between the privateer and the regular Kraken. Um, and I think the BMM video is probably a good idea too. I have a decoding the BMM video talking about uh, how this could be used as a cruise ship. Uh, and my, my good friend Monkey, who's a VR developer, thing really thinks outside the box. Uh, helped me kind of understand this ship a little bit. We kind of had fun theory crafting. Um, it's a little out there, very creative video, but it is worth it to check out if you're a big fan of the BMM. So uh, also on the front here, you can see these large doors for its size eight pair of size eight guns that hides on, on the front nose. Virtually the entire nose is just those size eights. The ammunition reloading system of it and the ammo itself. Uh, the engines are huge. They take up a significant portion of the back of the ship uh, that's before this turret. So all this area here is engineering. So it's going to be a rather fast vessel for its size. I don't know if it's going to be very fuel efficient, but it will be a long distance ship. So it will have a decent sized fuel tank to run those big engines really long. And uh, it's going to be an incredible ship. This is the kind of ship you pick up so you are not having to worry about the price hikes in the near future. Now, on the long term, the long term, I highly recommend the Endeavor. The Endeavor class vessel is by far the biggest of the, uh, hmm, how do I put this? Long term holds. So if you can get yourself on MISC day, a CCU that's like $10 or $20 or something USD, uh, from a uh, Starfarer or Gemini or a Mole to an Endeavor, that would be the way to go. If it's any reasonable amount of money, if you don't already have one of those. If you've heard the people talk about, I got my, my BMM at 250, 300, 350, whatever, and I, I wish I was in on it back then, then the, the Endeavor is for you. If you don't want to buy this at the price hiked price of 550 USD. I wish there was a Warbond 500 so I could recommend it a bit more when the CCUs, uh, but it, that's not the case. So you know if the ship's for you, it's still worth it at the price hike, but it really makes me pause in suggesting it to everyone. It's a ship for people that have almost everything already and uh, are looking for what you know that one last money maker, that one top of the line ship to really sell everything. Um, that aren't interested in the privateer or don't have the budget to do so. A uh, very cool ship, very cool, great way to end Alien Day. I'd like to thank you for being here. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you to my long-term subscribers. I do these videos for everybody, for newcomers, for folks coming back, and for folks that are <sighs> been here forever like I have. And I'll tell you this, the reason I do these is for you. I really enjoy inter interacting with everybody. I'm always available. Comments below in public or in private at Red J hashtag 0001 on Discord. Thank you all. Fly safe. Hope to see you at IAE. Take care. Oh, and by the way, I keep saying that um, and the most common time I'm, I'm active is Eastern Standard Time, EST, uh, U.S. time zone uh, at night. So basically, I'm pretty active around 8, 8 p.m. to around 11, 12, something like that uh, for my in-game play. I do these shows right around when this hits me at 11 a.m. to 12 a.m. To, to noon, I should say, uh, to 12 p.m. Uh, and basically, I make these videos at the, the showroom floor. And then when I actually do play is at night. <laughs> so if you're wondering, like, when am I available? When am I on? That's time to hit me up if you want to go fly some stuff and blow some stuff up. Uh, tonight, I'm hoping to do some credit grinding. 
I've got some friends who want to get some more gear, and I'm hoping to grind that as well, like get my hands on a whole bunch of gear I can just hand out, and some credits I can get them so they can rent more exciting ships. Yes, I said rent ships, even though stuff is zero UEC, because uh, for whatever reason, some people do not come to the showroom floor, and I'd rather just be able to throw them some, ca some UEC while we're sitting on a station and get them moving. Yes, I know that's weird, but... uh. <laughs> <laughs> and come to think of it i don't even know if you can rent a ship on on the stations so this is something i'm working on and it is something that is near and dear to my heart though the any way i possible i can get people to <laughs> uh any way possible i can get folks to play the game i will encourage it as best as possible and let them make sure people have a good time Alrighty, i am out take care and fly safe